Good morning. It's great to be with you today. We're continuing to look at Paul's letter to the Ephesians and the illustrations that he uses to describe what it means to be church together. And this morning, we're going to think um, a little bit about the church being the body of Christ. Uh, We're dipping into chapter four of Ephesians to do this. So let's just dive straight in and read some of the verses that speak to us a little bit um, about this topic. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become, in every respect, the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Do you know, I absolutely loved watching the Olympics. I was so distracted by the games that I had to resort to porridge and pizza to feed my kids um, as I was so engrossed watching the fastest, the highest, and the longest on the world stage. And I just couldn't prepare anything more. One thing I especially loved in these games was the mixed relays in the swimming and the triathlons. I thought that they were just fantastic. And I just feel they really resonate so well with our topic this morning. You know, the men and women in those Olympic relays were united in their goal. They all had a job to do, and each of them did it to the absolute best of their ability. But what really stands out in all team events is that the sum of the parts is so much greater than the individual. And that is very much the case for us as a church. You know, we know that church is made up of individuals, all with um, an enormous variety of gifts, talents, and flair in such a huge range of areas and activities. You know, we all have a heart um, and love and passion for different things, whether it be youth or social justice or climate issues. And just like our Olympians, We each have a role to play, but when we work together to encourage and build each other up, to support and equip one another, the sum of our parts becomes so much greater than the individual. You know, as people who have received Jesus as saviour, we are part of the body of Christ, no matter what our background we all have a unique and special role to play. Now in the opening verse of this chapter, Paul urges us to live a life worthy of the calling we have received. Now every member of this congregation has a calling, a purpose, and is in a unique position to build God's kingdom and to shine his love and light into the world. Now, I have a little book of one-liners um, from the Christian comedian Milton Jones. And one of the things that he says about church is that church should be 
everyone arriving with one piece of the jigsaw. Now last year doing, during lockdown, um, I did quite a few jigsaw puzzles to try and alleviate some of the boredom. Every single piece in a jigsaw is completely unique in color and shape. And yet when they're put together correctly, they create this amazing picture. When finished, you know, you can still see all the individual pieces of the puzzle. They don't lose any of their uniqueness, but they make up this incredible image. But one of the most frustrating things about a puzzle um, is if a piece is missing, the gaping hole just screams out at you, out at you, and the puzzle just doesn't look as good. And this is very much the case for church. You know, we are all individuals, unique and special. But when we join together in love and unity as one body, we make the most incredible picture for the world to see. And every member of the body is valuable and needed. Now in the New Testament, one of the primary ways for reaching people with the gospel of Jesus was to plant churches. Paul went from city to city, preaching and gathering converts and establishing a local church. And why did he do this? Because God's great purpose is more than just people being converted bringing this new local community into existence is God's plan of salvation. It's not just a detachable extra, it's an absolute essential. The head that is Christ works through the body that is the church. Christ has united himself to his people and chooses to do his work in the world through local congregations. He displays his glory through the gathering of believers. You know, when we're gathered by God, we are of supreme value and we can do remarkable things. Now, there are four things that I think we can learn from the analogy of the church being the body of Christ. Firstly, as we read in verse 15, Christ is the head of the church. You know, the church belongs to Jesus. Jesus is the source and the origin of the church, as well as the leader and ruler of it. He is the head and, in his grace, decided to make us the body. Christ has gathered us together. We are his people. The body serves at the direction of the head, and our calling is to be responsive to him. Secondly, every member needs to be connected to the head, to Jesus. If we look at verse 16, we see that the whole body grows and builds itself up from him, from Jesus. To mature both as a church and as individuals, we need to be grounded in truth, anchored in God's word. That's how we stay connected to Jesus. You know, the Holy Spirit uses God's word to build us into strong, stable and healthy Christians who are committed in our faith and able to disciple others and lead people to Jesus. You know, we need to be asking Jesus in prayer for his guidance and help and allowing the love of God to really affect our daily lives so that we can know Christ and see our place within his body. You know, the church will just be another group of people or a club unless we know the Saviour, stay connected to him and realise again that he has called us together to be his people in this community. We need to be a church that is governed by love. As a church of Jesus Christ, we need to reflect the love of Jesus, both to one another and to the outside world. 
Now, Paul tells us to be speaking the truth in love. Now, God's truth, speaking in, in love, is a way to encourage and guide those who are struggling or off track or wayward, those who are burdened or weary, hurting or vulnerable. You know, it's, it's a way to bring people into a place where they can thrive and grow in Jesus, where they can find rest and peace. So this morning, who do you know that right now is weary and tired, maybe hurting or struggling, that you could come alongside and encourage or pray with or be in listening ear for? Who do you know that's becoming disconnected from the church, from Jesus? You know, we all need to be praying and encouraging everyone to stay connected to Jesus. Now, the third thing I think we can take away from this chapter is that every member of the body must be responsive to the head, must be responsive to Jesus. Maybe you've come to think that you're, maybe you've come to think of yourself as someone who's unable to function at church, or maybe who has nothing to really contribute. But you know, when you're connected to Jesus, you draw life from Him. His spirit lives in you and you are joined to the body. He has a role for you. And if you respond to his calling, you'll be able to fulfill the work that he has for you to do. If people are to experience the love of Christ, you know, how's that going to happen? Yeah, Jesus can do it directly, but actually people usually... Um, first experience the love of Christ through the members of his body. That's us. You know, that's why it's so often said that we are, in this sense, Christ's hands and his feet. We respond to him and in so doing, reach out to others. And then finally, the fourth point that um, I wanted to make um, is that Every member has a part to play. Again, looking at verse 16, it reminds us that each part has work to do. You know, we're a group of people linked to Christ and called together into God's family. We are all of value and all have a special something to contribute. And we need everyone to be playing their part because we just can't do without each other. The church is not a building. The church is people in relationship, you and me, striving to live in community with each other, empowered by the Holy Spirit to live the gospel of Jesus. We are God's people coming together. The Holy Spirit binds us to Christ. You know, Paul talks about us being like ligaments, connected together, supporting each other, helping each other grow and offering our diverse talents to each other with compassion and patience for one another. If someone is sad, then we all share that sadness. If someone is disadvantaged, we all feel that disadvantage. If someone is sick, then we long for them to be well. If someone is separated, we want for them to have a sense of belonging again. If someone is struggling to cope, we sense that struggle. If someone gets a promotion, we celebrate their success. If a person deserves praise, we're liberal in giving them some praise. We encourage others to use their gifts to the fullest. You know, in the Christian fellowship, in church, there's a different set of values which affects the way we operate. And this doesn't happen naturally. It only happens when we're linked to Christ. So it follows then that the stronger the link to Jesus, the more this kind of interaction and togetherness becomes a reality in our church. 
In verse 11, it says, Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. This verse is telling us that it's not just the leadership positions that have a job to do. You know, everyone has a role to play, a work of service to perform, so that we all grow in Christ to become more like Jesus every day. Christ never intended for us to do his work on our own, which is why he gave us the church, so that we can do it together. You know, there's a lovely image that someone shared with me oh, many, many years ago, but it's always stayed with me. You know, picture you, if you will, a, a coal fire blazing and full of warmth with all the individual coals adding to the heat of this furnace. Now, if we were to remove one of those coals from the fire, it retains its heat for a little bit of time, but soon becomes cold and completely ineffective in its role of providing warmth. To do its job, it needs to be in the fire with the other coals. And the same can be said about us. We belong in the body of Christ. And in order to perform the work that God has for us to do, we need to stay connected to the whole body. You know, elsewhere in the Bible, in Hebrews, it says this, it says, let us consider how we might spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. You know, every single person has a role to play in keeping the fire burning, in keeping the body of Christ active and effective in showing the world around us what God's kingdom looks like. A place of unity, of love, of encouragement and support, of joy and peace. A place where we can belong. Where, as Paul says um, earlier in, in Ephesians, we are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of his household. And you know, when we hang out together in grace with other Christians, remarkable things start to happen. There are so many different ways to get involved in church life here at Highgrove and to serve one another and the community in order to bring God's love and his light into a hurting and desperate world. You know, what is your role? What God-given talents and gifts do you have that you can bring to the body to build it up and then to go out and reach this community, city and nation for Jesus. You know, perhaps you're feeling a little bit unsure of what you can contribute to church life, or just feel you need a little bit of guidance or equipping. Well, if that's you, then why don't you ask about being linked up with a mentor, or plug yourself into a small group, or perhaps you can try out a new role in, um, in church by volunteering on a serving team. You know, we're all a work in progress and our roles change over time. So don't be tempted just to sit still. You know, God has great plans and purposes for each one of us. Just ask him to show you where he wants you to be serving him. And as God shapes and matures us as individuals, he will also shape and mature the whole church. And finally, as I draw to a close, you know, Paul reminds us throughout this whole chapter that we are to be completely humble and gentle, patient, bearing with one another in love, united in the spirit through um, a bond of peace. We're to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgives us and speaking only what is helpful to build each other up. So let's be a congregation just like that, 
united as one body under the Lordship of Christ, staying connected and responsive to him, loving one another, serving Jesus and each other with kindness and compassion. Do you know, a body like that will win gold for Jesus every time. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your amazing church and for what it means to belong in your family as part of your body. Thank you that you created each and every one of us with unique talents, gifts and roles to play as members of your body. Help us to be a united church where your love shines out to all around us. Amen.